Brandywine. Now I'm playing double blind solitaire, which means I'm playing solitaire and I'm role playing the different commanders. And even though I know where everyone is, they don't. So I'm running them as though they have no idea. They would know only what their historical counterparts would know. First we have green. Of course they're set up to defend, they're not moving, and they wouldn't know about any of this. This is a surprise attack. So they're still waiting, as is Washington and Sullivan. So actually I've drawn them all first, so now they cannot move. Cornwallis, he moves as he is on the board here, and Nafossin last. Nafossin holds and demonstrates, makes lots of noise, maybe fires guns into the air. They know he's coming. So now the colonial player has to fight these battles, at least for one round. Now this is the fourth turn. Now here you see the colonials have fallen back, and there's a couple spent British units, but overall they've held. The British are doing all right. The detachment up here was wiped out by the cavalry, the British Dragoons. Turn five. First is Green. How is he going to react to this new development? He can't leave the Brandywine unguarded. Sullivan pulls his command back. Washington places Maxwell on Birmingham Hill and moves Pulaski's cavalry to hold the passage here. Cornwallis continues his forward assault. Nafossin starts rolling up his line with Cornwallis's advance. Radley Ridge sees the assault of Cornwallis's best troops. Sullivan had left his reserve troops too close and they get pushed back. It's late afternoon. Washington has Maxwell move into the woods. He has a screen of militia in front of him. Green continues rushing troops northward. Sullivan has pulled his command off the line. He begs Washington, General, can you unpack some bags? My men are desperate. And it's now early evening. Sullivan still desperately imploring General Washington to unpack his bags. Nafossin stops demonstrating and steps up the assault. Washington unpacks bags behind Battle Hill. Green moves up to Street Road. Knox's artillery opens up across Chad's Ford, driving back the British artillery. Early evening combat. Now here, since Nafossin has crossed the river, he's already fights as though he were outflanked for the first round. But because he actually is outflanked, he fights the entire combat outflanked. His troops fall back across the river. The assault across Britain's Ford. Washington troops are pushed back into Green's troops in all his confusion at Britain's Ford. The colonial detachment melts away. And now Mad Anthony Wayne's division facing the best British troops. Although at number two to one, Wayne fights until he is exhausted and so are the British troops. There is no force of any consequence remaining. Now the British Grenadiers face off against Maxwell's light infantry. Maxwell's troops fighting in the woods does what they're so good at. The British Grenadiers are no longer a fighting force. And the Continental Cavalry holds off against the British Dragoons. It's the last turn of the day, and Brandywine is turning out very differently. Nafossin unpacks his bag, recovers his worn troops, pushes across from Britain's Ford to continue the push, and boldly steps forward from Jones Ford. The last instant, Sullivan's line recovers. The British artillery opens up on the Dragoons, driving them back. Washington rallies his troops on Rondelet Hill. Maxwell's troops slip the noose. 
in Green's troops and Nefasin's troops exchanged fire ineffectively at that range. Final combat in the center. The Colonials make the British pay for a bit as they fall back into the woods. And the day comes to a close. The battle ends with the British stymied. So you'd be tended, history will say the Americans did very well at Brandywine. <clears throat> but if you fought this as a two day battle on the second day, the Colonials with nowhere to retreat, these bags unpacked, it would be lost. So tonight, Washington will obviously pull back saying, you know, good job, let's fall back to another point. But he wasn't forced to fall back. They didn't capture his unpacked bags. If you go by losses, the Colonials lost two blocks, the British lost two elite blocks, and a regular block. So the Americans lost six points, the British lost 11 points. This is a very Pyrrhic victory, if you call it a British victory at all. Good game.